Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about geometric sequences and series. So there is a formula um, that you can use to write a geometric sequence, but you have to make sure that you know it's a geometric sequence so you can tell uh, that a sequence is geometric when the ratios of the consecutive terms are the same. That's kind of a fancy way of saying that to get to the next term you're either multipl you're multiplying by the same common ratio. And you can test this by taking the second term and dividing it by the first term, the third term and divided by the second, and that ratio should be the same. So the formula is a sub n equals a sub 1, meaning the first term, times r to the n minus 1. And r is going to be that common ratio. Now it is really important to note that we do have to follow order of operations here. A lot of times uh, people really want to multiply these two values, but remember, r is being raised to an exponent, so you can't multiply them until you've taken care of the exponent. Alright, so let's try an example together. So this one asks us to find the 15th term of the geometric sequence, whose first term is 20, and whose common ratio is 1.05. So to find the 15th term, rather than just starting with 20 and finding the next term and then the next term all the way up to the 15th, we can make our, our uh, equation. So a sub n equals a sub 1, which is 20, times r, which is 1.05, to the power of n minus 1. So this is our equation. And then to find the 15th term, we just plug in 15 for n. And so this will be to the power of 14. Then you can get a decimal approximation from your calculator, and it's about 39.60. So there you have it. Let's do another one together. This one says find a formula for the nth term of this geometric sequence. So I know that it's very obvious for this particular sequence what the common ratio is. You can see that each time we're just multiplying by 3. But let's try that test just to make sure that our common ratio is the same, and so you know how to do it if the numbers were a little trickier. So remember I said um, you take the second term and you divide it by the first, and you get 3, and then you take the third term and you divide it by the second, and you get 3 again. So you can see that our common ratio is in fact 3. And like I said, in this sequence it's very obvious but there's other ones where it might not be as obvious, so you need to know how to find that common ratio. So uh, now let's make the formula. So a sub n equals a sub 1, which we know is 5, times 3 to the power of n minus 1. And that's it. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can give this problem a try. Alright, so here you can see that our common ratio is, our, our a sub 1 is 4 and the common ratio is 5. So here is our formula. Okay, so now uh, we are going to work with this scenario where we don't know a sub 1 and we also don't know r, but we are given uh, two values. So we can find both of those by, find, by uh, setting up a system of equations. So remember, when we're told something like this, this is just saying when the n value is 4, a sub n is 125. So we're going to be using, once again, our base formula. And let's start by creating our first um, equation. So I can say that 125, which is a sub n, equals a sub 1 times r to the power of 4 minus 1. So my n value is 4, a sub n was 125, which I can really quickly simplify to this. And then let's make our second equation um, using this piece of information. We can say 125 over 64 equals a sub 1 times r to the power of 9, right, 10 minus 1. So I just skipped one step there. Now, usually the easiest way to go here um, is using substitution method and isolating a sub uh, 1 and then plugging into the other one. And the reason why is it's really easy to isolate. Um, a sub 1, if you try to isolate r, then you'll have to take the cube root and it gets a lot messier. So this is definitely the way to go. So I've solved for a sub 1 and I'm going to plug it into this equation. So here I have 125 over r cubed 
times r to the power of 9. And you can see here that we have some r values that will cancel out. So we have 125 times r to the power of 6. So then you can divide both sides by 125 and you get 1 over 64 equals r to the power of 6. And then if you take the sixth root of both sides, you end up with 1 over 2. Because the sixth root of 64 is 2. So now that I know my r value, I can go back and plug it in right here. So we have 125 times 1 half to the power of, to the third power. So here we essentially have 125 times 8 because we're multiplying by the reciprocal of uh, 1 eighth. So we get 1,000. And now we have our formula. So we can say a sub n equals 1,000 times 1 half to the power of n minus 1. And now they did ask us to find that 14th term. So now all we have to do, sorry, this should be a 14, is substitute n for 14. And if you plug that into your calculator, you can get a decimal approximation, or you can simplify it as a fraction, and you should end up with 125 over 1024. Either way, a decimal approximation is fine as well. Okay, uh, go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. Okay, so um, here I use that same process. I set up my two equations. I solve for a sub 1 and substituted it, allowing me to solve for r, and then I substitute again, allowing me to solve for a sub 1 completely. Then here's my formula, and to find the eighth term, it is plugged in eight. Okay, so now we're going to start talking about how to find sums of a geometric series. So there's actually two types of sums you're going to learn today. And the first one is the sum of a finite geometric series, meaning that it has a distinct endpoint. So you're finding the sum of the first 20 terms or the sum of the first 15 terms it has an endpoint. So the formula for that, so here you can see it's just a normal uh, geometric sequence. The formula to find the, the sum of the first n terms is a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So this will always work for finding the first n terms of a geometric sequence. Okay, so let's give this first one a try. Here we can clearly see that this is a geometric sequence. I can see a sub 1 and I can see r right here. So now all we have to do is plug it into our formula. So we could say the sum of the first 12 terms is a sub 1, which we know is 4, times 1 minus r, which we know is 0 0.3, to the power of 12, which is our n value, over 1 minus 0 0.3. Now this is just something that you can plug into your calculator and get a decimal approximation and you should get approximately 5.714. Alright, go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. Okay, so here same process, a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the power of n all over 1 minus r. So you should get approximately 2.667. Now just remember that this is a formula for the first n terms of a sequence or series. Um, if you are, are asked to find a, a set a sum from let's say 5 to 12, you would have to find the sum of the first 12 and then subtract the sum of the first 4. So very similar to what we did with arithmetic uh, series. Okay, here's the second type of um, geometric sum that we're going to learn, and it's actually for an infinite geometric series. So this doesn't always work. It's only for a very specific set of geometric sequences. But if the absolute value of r is less than 1, 
then you in, you actually can find a an infinite sum. So the idea is if the um, absolute value of r is less than one, that's making that's going to make your small your terms closer and closer and closer to zero every time you multiply by that value. And if you're consistently adding a number that is getting closer and closer and closer to zero, you're going to eventually reach essentially a limit. So it's kind of like what we talked about with horizontal asymptotes. You're getting really, really, really infinitely close to some number. And it's so close that we can actually say that it is the sum of the entire series. So this formula is super easy. It's very straightforward. It's just a sub one over one minus r. Now remember, you do need to check your r values because you need to make sure that uh, the terms in your sequence are getting closer and closer to zero. Notice I'm not saying smaller because if your r value is actually getting smaller, it's actually getting more negative and your numbers are getting farther away from zero. So it's only occurring when your numbers are getting closer to zero. All right, so let's give this problem a try. Here they would like us to find the sums if possible. So in this first one, uh, I want to check our R value. I see that our R value is 0 0.6, which falls within uh, the range of our sum. So one thing I do want to point out, you might notice that something looks a little different. Typically, we see n equals 1 as our starting point, but you also might notice that here, we don't see n minus 1, we just see n. So this lack of the n minus 1 is actually compensating for the fact that now we're starting at 0. So we can still use this same formula because it's kind of like both things have been pushed back by 1. So um, we're going to do a sub 1, which is still 4, and then we just do 1 minus r, which is 0 0.6, and this ends up just being 10. All right, let's look at this next one. Um, for this problem, we're not specifically told what our r value is, but you can probably tell that your r value is 1 tenth or 0 0.1. But let's say we, we don't know just by looking. So remember, we can use that trick of finding that common ratio. We can say 0 0.3 divided by 3, and we know that that's 1 tenth. Or we could say 0 0.1. One. So either way, you should be able to find that r value. So I know that a sub 1 is 3. I know that r is 0 0.1. So I can find the sum, 3 over 1 minus r. And this is going to be a repeating decimal. So we can give it an approximation, or you can leave it as a fraction if you'd like, 3.33 approximately. All right, go ahead and pause the video and give these last two problems a try. Okay, so for the first one, uh, very clear what a sub 1 and what r um, are for this problem. So 5 over 1 minus 0 0.5 is 10. And here you can probably see just by looking that the r value is... One fifth, but remember you can always do your second term divided by your first term and then your third term divided by your second term and you would get one fifth as your R value. So here you could say 25 fourths or 6.25. Either way is fine. All right, thank you for watching.